All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at an interesting knife and digging into it, disassembling it, and taking a look at what is on the inside of the TRM Shadow. Now, this is not a knife that, unfortunately, too many people get to handle, but it is a really cool knife. And a little bit, a little while back, I did a video breaking down the Tactile Knife Co. Maverick and, you know, kind of taking a look or trying to take a look at as much of the internals as I could and see what was on the inside. So I thought now, Naturally, you know, why not take a look at the TRM Shadow, see what's on the inside of this American-made crossbar lock, axis style lock knife. So once again, uh, this knife is similar to, you know, or kind of takes advantage of the fact that the Benchmade patent has expired on the crossbar or axis lock. So this knife is another American made contender, similar to things like the Hogue Deca, once again, the Tactile Knife Co Maverick and other such blades. So without any further ado, let's bring you guys close up and let's take this knife apart. All right, guys, so this is, like I said, the TRM Shadow, and we're going to be jumping into it, taking a look at what is on the inside of this little knife. So what we are going to need for this guy, I'm already going to assume is T6 and T8. Probably gonna need a T8 for this, yeah, this pivot, and then T6 for the body screws, I can almost guarantee. So yeah, totally what I thought. Now, one thing I will say about this knife that I'm initially, at least from the kind of maintenance side of this blade, not a huge fan of, is the amount of body screws that are on this thing. Now, I do understand that there does need to be a certain amount of body screws for these like middle ones here. In case people are wondering, these guys need to exist basically because of how the mechanism works, which we'll get into more in just a little bit. But I'm not a huge fan that there are like three backspacer screws. I feel like even though they don't flow through um, to the other side, this definitely could have been done a little bit differently. And in my opinion, um, with, you know, like two screws as opposed to having like three, you know, individual screws here. I just really don't see the purpose of having all three screws um, here. Now, that being said, I do think overall, it's a fairly decent design. Um, I do love the ergonomics. Like I said, the actual like user portion of this blade, I totally dig. Um, I think it's completely cool. I love the ergos. And the biggest thing is I love the fact that this blade is super slicey. Like it's the same stock thickness of, you know, CPM 20 CV that all the TRM blades use. Now, like I said, because of the interesting construction of this handle, they only have screws on this side and outside of this one screw on this guy on the side. But um, that's primarily because this knife, that's primarily because this knife is very similarly constructed to a lot of the like striders where you have this, this handle side is also the backspacer. So you'll see when we pull this guy apart here, um, I have to pull the actual pivot, of course, but you'll see when we pull the knife apart that the backspacer is kind of integral to one side of the handle. And so kind of like that style. Um, it's very unique, and interesting and different. But yeah, so it's pretty interesting that you, um, you don't tend to see too often, like you sometimes see, you know, maybe one side of the handle is, you know, like milled out a little bit extra and the other milled out a little bit extra. But um, on striders, they at least claim to do it because of structural integrity, because they claim that G10 is, you know, uh, more of like a more brittle um, material and titanium, so they prefer to have it that way. I will say there's definitely plenty of thread locker in here. It's nice to see that uh, for sure. Um, you guys can see kind of struggling to pull this pivot apart, but have it there and there we go. As the knife tries to bite me. <laughs> All right, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Now, of course, we have phosphorus bronze washers, as you would expect to see. Um, I do like, once again, seeing the phosphorus bronze washers. I feel like a lot of my knife friends as well have kind of been commenting on the fact that, in my opinion, I'm not saying that, um, like, having bearings are, 
I kind of feel like taking bearing or having bearings as your pivot system is kind of like taking the easy way out um, because if you have um, phosphorus bronze washers, you really have to tune the knife so that it performs well. Whereas if you have, you know, bearings, they're kind of just an easy out. You can basically just make a knife smooth by having those bearings. Anyways, what we're really here for is to look at the inside of this knife. And I find it very intriguing. So this is not something I was initially anticipating, but as you can see here, so you have your three screws here, um, or at least your three screw holes where your body screws would, you know, of course, screw into. But what I was not expecting is you have these steel, uh, at least I assume steel kind of rods right here, and they appear to be glued in. Like they don't uh, feel like they're loose or moving at all. Um, but you have these two kind of metal bits or rods that lock into this side of the handle scale for extra security. I think that's actually pretty cool. In my opinion, I think it's a little bit overboard. Like personally, I think having the three screws is a little overboard, but on top of that, having these two pins is a little bit overboard in my opinion as well. However, I will give it to them this is a very integral design and it's definitely not gonna lose any traction. So I will say, like I said, I don't think it's necessary, but props or hats off to TRM for really making this um, G10 like show, uh, show scale really, really integral. And as you guys can see what I mean about the integralness of this, this piece is all one piece of G10. This isn't, you know, like added in here this is just milled when they mill the G10, they leave this spot high. So that's kind of how this works. Of course, nothing too surprising here. You have a lot of inner milling work um, to accommodate, of course, your spring travel for your crossbar lock. And then of course, this is your liner for those who don't know, I've kind of alluded to it in other videos, like this is the whole of the liner of the TRM Shadow. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion. I, I think like a lot of people, it's kind of like the false sense of notion with full tang knives like you know the the cold steel srk is not a full tang knife and it's close to a full tang knife but it's a very strong knife right a lot of mora's clippers and companions are not full tang knives but they're very strong knives and so i think it's very similar when you look at an axis lock knife or an axis style knife like this uh trm shadow and you're like wow these are this is the liner of the knife you know that must be a really weak knife but as far as it goes, like your locking mechanism is right here and your locking mechanism is surrounded by stainless steel, right? So this is all very strong. I'd be concerned if the axis lock uh, or crossbar lock was not supported in this way. But when it comes to a crossbar lock, you really don't need you know, to have a full steel, you know, liner because it's not really actually going to improve the strength of the knife. You know, having steel down here isn't going to increase the strength uh, of, you know, a part or material up here, you know, within reason. So I think that it's it's not a bad call. Of course, the um, Benchmade Griptilians are all made like this. Even the Benchmade 940 is made like this. Like you can see the um, Benchmade 940 Hopefully you guys can see in here. Um, the Benchmade 940 has a very similar style. It might be hard to show on camera, but you know, like the tang of the 940 only runs to about here. And once again, it's a very similar style. So I, I don't think that on a crossbar lock, this level of, you know, liner impacts the strength and rigidity. So that being said, um, something I like is the way that they did this. Um, with the Omega Springs or how they did the Omega Springs. They made it a nice little slot on the Maverick. You guys, if you saw that video, they had specific holes. I like this system a lot more because if for whatever reason you have to replace one of these, it's very easy to just put it under tension and get it lined up with its slot and get it back into action. So I like this. It's very user friendly, very straightforward. And I'd imagine it's probably cheaper to machine this whole unit than try to drill a bunch of holes. One kind of disadvantage of you know, machining the whole, um, as far as tension goes, uh, is that 
like we saw in the Maverick, there were multiple positions you could put the uh, Omega spring to give you some different level of tension. But I honestly think that that's largely gimmicky because you're probably not really going to do that in the first place. Um, so I don't really think it's that necessary. Now, I'm not gonna break this knife down any further than this, primarily because I don't really need to. But if you did want to, what you would do is once again, you'd go back to your T6 Torx bit, um, as you can see. And on this one in particular, there are other you know crossbar styles, but what you do with the TRM Shadow is you take your T6, you would basically pop these guys off, these um, little kind of thumb studs, if you will, for the, the crossbar lock, and then uh, you just pop it off. So that's how you would remove this if you wanted to take your liner all the way down. Like I said, we can basically see everything here, so there's nothing really, there's no real reason for me to break it down any further, but that's how you do that. Um, going over to the other side, of course, there's nothing too fancy over here. You have your clip, um, so you have your screws obviously here. I do like the brass fittings for everything, so you screw into um, you know metal on this side you're not screwing into g10 um, you know in this regard with your body screws and with your clip screws it's the same exact way so yeah aside from that you just have you know more of the same lightning cuts there's even a little lightning cut here i believe this is likely just for you know weight reduction i don't really know what else that that particular hole would serve so yeah really good uh honest design i think it's pretty simple but at the same time too, I don't really see any need to make this more complicated. I think overall it's a really good, really easy setup and I like how simplistic the machining is and what I like about simplistic machining, um, you know, there's nothing really fancy here on previous, like on the Maverick, we saw that the phosphorus bronze washers were um, milled out with holes, very reminiscent of the CRK style of knives to retain um, lubrication but I think that this is just very simple and what I was gonna say is what I like about simple blades like this is that usually and in the case of this knife it comes with you know cost reduction so the knife is cheaper to the end user but it's just because it's simple it's simple and it's well made so I really don't have any qualms with that or any issues or problems I personally like, you know, the more simplistic, the better in my opinion. So yeah, I think it's a, a total win, like I said, in my opinion. So anyways, now it's time to basically do the opposite of what we did. So my plan for this, and I feel like I just kind of make this up as I go along, but my initial plan is that I want to put these body screws back in and kind of get the whole of the liner reassembled. So got that guy there and I'm choosing to do this on this particular side what I call like the backspacer side because everything is going to set in on this side so I'm not as worried about reattaching this side itself so then next one I'm going to do is let's see how do I want to do this actually I think with most access lock access style knives like this probably the easiest thing to do is just set this all down so what I'm gonna do is just set this guy down in here. Try to get it all locked in with those little like little bars on the inside and then I'm gonna screw it in. I think something that can be tricky with some of these is trying to get this little body screw here to suck in that other side of the liner because naturally as you guys could probably see, it gets pretty floppy when there's nothing kind of holding it together like the screw kind of pulls that liner apart from the other side of the liner but if you're into any issues you just use gravity you know it's not too complicated and uh, for this I'm not even going to put this t6 um, back in the screwdriver I can just do this by hand because I'm actually going to come back through and you know truly tighten it but to get these screws initially started I'm just going to use my hands so yeah, overall it's a really simple blade. Um, the hardest thing for me, the thing I dislike the least is reassembly on any crossbar knife. In fact, I don't usually show it because it's just a little bit of a game, but I'm gonna see if I can show it in this one. I'm sure that there are different styles of reassembling, you know, access lock knives, but this is kind of the style that I use most often. So what I will do, I have a little bit of KPL here too. 
as I throw the cap around, I have a little bit of KPL. So usually what I'll do is just take some KPL, run it across the inside of the you know, kind of mechanism. So I'll usually try to do that and then set that someplace where the KPL won't make too big of a mess. And then what I'll do is, so I'm gonna take this, um, this guy here, and of course there is a flat, and I think on most of these you know, pivots, or on a lot of pivots you'll encounter, there's like a little flat you know, bar there, so you just wanna match that flat bar. In this case, the flat bar is upwards, so we'll do that. And then I just ever so slightly try to start the, um, start the pivot in there, so I have just a little bit of that pivot going up. Actually, I think I pushed it just a little bit too far, but I usually, what I'll do is like, I'll take that pivot, um, just push it up just a little bit and kind of try to seat that first um, washer in there. And I think what makes this easiest is using like a T6 just in your hand or any Torx bit for that matter and just kind of seat it in there. And then what I'll do is I'll take my blade and uh, usually what I do is I take my blade, seat it in next and then kind of, you know, put some tension against your axis lock. That's where it gets a little bit tricky. Sorry for the rough camera angles here because I'm trying to do it in person, but yeah. So basically you just, do this kind of thing. And it's always a little bit tricky because you have to try to line up, you know, like two liners and a blade. And of course, then, like I said, the other trick is you have to line up two liners, a blade, and you have to hold back your axis lock. So unfortunately, I actually did get it to go through, but I did not get my second. Oh, and then we almost have all of it together. Like I said, a lot of it's just kind of taking like what I will usually do with reassembly on these guys is try to take, you know, a um, Torx bit and just kind of use it to push everything into place. And then there we go. So everything is locked back in, just needs its pivot screw. And that is of course a T8. So I'll throw this T8 back on here. And usually, you know, I just kind of make it decently tight. And then the easiest thing to do when it comes to tightening pretty much all folding knives is, you know, once you get it decently tight, basically just look in and see, you know, how do I align and center that blade? Because wherever the blade is centered for the most part on the knife is where it's going to be its happiest with its action. So you can see back to being nice and smooth. Now the only thing that's left to do is just go back over all of those T6s that we put in and just torque them down a little bit. Once again, it's important to note in my opinion, um, when it comes to T6s, I try to, you know, put a decent torque on them, you know, to make sure that they're not just gonna back out. But I really, really do not put that much force on a T6 because T6 uh, torque spits are just so easy to strip. I really dislike it when knife companies use them. That's why I think, if I remember correctly on the Maverick, everything was a T8. I really liked that, not just because it was the, like, come watch and it, the uh, like homogenousness of the you know Torx bits, but also too at the same time, it was nice that it was just one singular you know bit to take the whole knife apart. But also T8s are a little bit more durable. So, anyways, that is a look at the TRM Shadow, and hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this knife and breaking it or seeing it broken down. It's really a simple knife on the inside, but I honestly don't mind that. You know, I think some knives get lost in the sauce of being too complex or too showy or having too many little you know options. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.